Hello, I'm Matthew McCullough. Welcome to the third episode in the series of Git Basics. Today, I'd like to take advantage of showing you what it would take to install, set up, configure, and then make your very first use of Git from the command line. We'll do that by first talking about where you would acquire this and what platform it works on. Git actually has mature installers, package managers, distributions, and source files for all of the major platforms today, Linux, Windows, and Mac. That download can be acquired from gitscm.com, the official homepage for Git, slash downloads. It'll automatically detect your operating system and present you with the appropriate link. A quick click, download, and a few setup steps, and you'll have Git installed on your system. Next, you need to configure your username and email address. These are not used for credentials on any of the Git hosting sites. They're simply local records to give you credit for the work that you'll be doing in the version control system. These are configured by two simple instructions from the command line. First, we'll want to configure your username and email address with Git. These are not credentials used for any hosting service. They're merely who to give credit to when it records the historical events that we call commits. You'll first configure your username. In this case, we'll just make it a friendly name that you would go by for team members or more publicly known on the net. User.name is the key that we're setting. Dana DevOps is the value. Its corresponding cousin is user.email. And we'll set that to whatever we would like, again, to record in our commits and to be known by, either within the team or, if we share this code open source, publicly. That's all the configuration that's necessary. From there, we can advance to actually making our first use of Git. It's very straightforward. Let me show you. Heading to the terminal window once again for our instructions, we'll begin with a git init and the name of our project, which will create a directory of that last parameter that we're passing on the command line. In this case, project one. We'll change directory, situating ourselves inside that project directory. We'll do a bit of coding. In this case, I'll keep it simple and call it just creating file1.txt. And then we'll decide to add that to version control. Adding in this case, opts it in to the next action, which is a commit. The add is not yet permanent. It's simply signaling that we want the file to participate in the next commit. We'll conclude by making that permanent record, recording the state of the file at a given point in time, and we do that with the commit command. Dash M allows us to provide a commit message at the command line. What we'd like to describe happened in the activities that are being recorded for this file. That's it. You've now recorded a historical event in the Git version control system, and you can repeat the coding, work on a new file, work on an existing file, add it, even add more than one file, use a wildcard, and then repeat that commit at the very end. Just keep cycling through that, and you'll keep recording historical events that can be returned to at a later point in time. That's all there is to getting started with Git, but I imagine you'll have much more that you want to learn, and the place to go for that documentation, tutorials, videos, and all the user reference pages is at gitscm.com forward slash documentation. Two simple configuration entries and away you go creating your first repository. And you'll be soon versioning all of your files that participate in any kind of software project.